and she's um, athletic and uh, she's mean. And um, all right, my second baby is my oldest daughter who's about to graduate from the University of Tennessee. She's 22. And let me tell y'all, I know every crow thinks theirs is the blackest, but let me say that she is a beauty. And she is smart, and um, she's done very well in school, and she's in a sorority and done well with her sorority, and she's um, athletic, and uh, she's mean. And um, we're scared to death of her. We walk on eggshells around her. She's not mean to other people or in public. She holds it in so that she can come home and like spew it out onto me. That's okay. That's God's way. But this is what I think happens. When she was a junior, her summer between her junior and senior year, I think that God allows this to happen. And you little girls, that your babies aren't this old, just listen to me. All right, one day they'll just turn on you. And you'll think, who in the world is this? Who's coming down the steps in the morning? We don't know who this is. I think that God allows that because he knows that you're about to let your baby go off to college or whatever they're going to do, and he knows that you're grieving. So he makes them just as mean as he can <laughs> so that you can let them go. And I believe that. That summer, the very breath that I breathed out of my nostrils <laughs> made her so angry. <laughs> we were not allowed to eat cereal in our own home because she couldn't stand to hear us chew. <laughs> I don't mean to talk about her because she had a lot on her. She had to empty the dishwasher. <laughs> Stuff like that. That's so hard. Okay, let me tell you about an example when she was probably your baby's age. Y'all, your, y'all's little children, because y'all are so cute. Look, they, their thyroid's still functioning. Y'all still got hair. Good for y'all. Um, y'all got on little britches. Yay. Okay. When my baby, when my middle one, when she was in elementary school, I was so blessed that I got to pick, take them to school and pick them up every day in my minivan. <laughs> and I would watch them come out, my girls, and I saw them. They were in a good mood. <laughs> I saw it. All right, they would be goosing each other and waving to all the little children and the principal. See you tomorrow. Okay. Then they they come over to my minivan, get in, slam the door. That middle one would take her backpack and sling me in the back of the head with it. She'd say every day something like, I'm starving to death. You don't have a piece of cheese in this car? Your driving's making me car sick. I hate her. Why did you have her? And the baby would be sitting over the bank. She'd be going, Mom, 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 Mom. And I'd say, what? And she'd go, Mom, 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 Mom. I go, what? I'm listening. She could say some of the craziest things. She said to me one day, did Jesus ever have head lice? How do you answer that? I said, well, baby, I don't, I don't know. But if he did, I know he healed it. <laughs> Let me tell y'all that I am a mama and I have three children that I'm in love with and um, I am now an empty nester. They, I have two in college and one married. And I... Um, you think I'd look forward to being an empty nester. Some people go, woo, I don't feel woo. I miss them, my husband misses them. Um, I found Netflix when I 
When the last one left, my baby child, she's now 20, when she left, I took to the bed. And I ate chocolate-covered blueberries that you get at Target. And, and I found Netflix. And I um, binged watched Scandal. Have y'all seen Scandal? That first season, the, the chemistry between the two main characters. I think something's really going on. Anyway, it set me on fire. And so I laid up in the bed and watched that and like ordered Jimmy John's from my bed. And my husband <laughs> said, are you all right? But I ended up getting sciatica from laying in the bed. I didn't get bed sores. I got sciatica and then ended up having to get physical therapy that cost $1,000 because of my deductible. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> but I grieve so much over my kids being gone. All right, so when my husband gets home, he's as sad as I am. When he gets home, we just stare out into space. <laughs> and he's, he's very quiet. He's an introvert. He doesn't talk. He doesn't chat. So I just sit and talk to myself. <laughs> And we have two beagle hounds, and we just sit and kiss them in the mouth. <laughs> and they are yummy. <laughs> and we go to bed, and I, I, a lot of y'all look really young in here, and I'm going to scare y'all to death, but I'm going to tell y'all, I'm going to tell, look at these young girls right here, I'm going to tell y'all what's your future. It's gonna be, okay? All right, when you get to be about your mid-40s, you're gonna go through, start a thing called perimenopause. It's before you go through menopause, and it makes you crazy. And you sweat in the bed at night. Okay, and you, all your hormones get messed up. All right, I go to the bedroom, and I am so hot at night that I put the air on 68, because I don't wanna die. <laughs> My husband puts it back up on 70. And he says, you're freezing me to death. He's having to wear pajamas for the first time in our marriage. Okay. He said, I can see my breath. That's a lie. But I know he is cold, because one time he had to wear a toboggan. But anyway, we get in the bed, and that big beagle, who is 10 years old, a boy named Augie, who is so sweet, my husband spoons him in the bed. <laughs> and then we've got a new little beagle that is a pocket beagle, and her name is Gigi, and she is so yummy. And she, she had a nervous tick when we got her, and she ate our couch. But other than that, I love her. And she gets in the bed, and she backs her little butthole up against my head. <laughs> at night, right here. And when we get, all right, so when my husband spoons that big one, that big one will wall his eyes at me and, and looks like, I don't want him. I want you. So when my husband drifts off to sleep, that big bagel scoots over and then gets in the crook of my legs. So. Through the night, I break out in a sweat because I'm in perimenopause and it's right here in the back of my neck. Dr. Oz said it. Okay, so then I'm sweating like I've done Zumba all night. And my husband snores. It, de it depends on if he's put on weight. If he's stressed out at work, he'll put on weight. He'll eat a bunch of white flour. And then he snores a different way. But if he's playing tennis and he's watching what he eats, this is really how he snores. He starts going, pew, pew, pew. It's enough to kill you. Okay, you can set a watch by it. Sometimes it's just a puff of air and it's on my head with a butthole right here with a big bangle right here. So that's your nighttime routine of perimenopause. Look at how beautiful they are. See, they still have their bloom. 
good for y'all. Y'all are probably out doing yoga. Okay, I have given up. All right. Let me tell y'all how this all started between me and my husband. We met at the University of Tennessee while he was stalking me. He was so tickled with me. Okay, he was getting an MBA. I was get, finishing up my undergraduate. He is so smart and such an overachiever that he had already gotten an undergraduate, worked for two years, and got an MBA. I was just finishing mine up, my undergraduate, because I'm so fun. And um, <laughs> I thought, oh my gosh, he is so smart. He can do math. He can, <laughs> he can reconcile a checkbook. There's no telling where we're going to go, what we're going to see, what we're going to, how we're going to live. Well, we graduated and he decided to buy a used mobile home business in Bean Station, Tennessee. And I know y'all don't know where, Bean Station is in the foothills of the Appalachia Mountains. Did any of y'all ever see Deliverance? <laughs> I think they filmed that there. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful lakes and pretty and all that. But so he moved me there and he wanted me to be in sales for him at this used mobile home business. So I did that day <laughs> until I saw a family drive up in a gremlin with the window out and a nine year old smoking a cigarette. <laughs> that's the truth. She lit it off of her memo. And that's her grandmother. Do I need an interpreter? Okay. She lit it off her grandmama. And so I quit that day and I went home and I got pregnant that night. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I had three babies in four and a half years. Yeah, it hurt. Um, <laughs> It did. I was pregnant and or breastfeeding for six straight years in the foothills of the Appalachia Mountains. Um, and let me tell y'all, when I found out about my third baby, I feel terrible how I reacted, but I was so overwhelmed and so tired. But I knew that day I didn't feel right. I thought, what is wrong with me? I'm tired and I kind of feel sick. And I thought, oh my gosh, surely I'm not pregnant this quick after this, you know, because my girls were 20 months apart. So I had to know, I was crazy. I drove to the Walmart in the foothills of the Appalachia Mountains, and I took my two babies with me, and the diaper bag and all that stuff you take with you, and I went into the Walmart and bought an EPT pregnancy test. I took it in the stall, and I tinkled on it. And my three-year-old boy looked at me and said, what, is it positive? And it was. And I drove home just as fast as I could, and I called my husband at work, and I said, you're trying to kill me, aren't you? <laughs> well, you're not going to, because I'm going to walk out in the woods and let the animals eat me. <laughs> but y'all little mamas probably know what I'm talking about. It's so overwhelming. We would be in the grocery store, and my three-year-old little boy, mm, so yummy, so sweet, would be in Superman panties with doo-doo balls falling out at the grocery store. I think, oh my gosh, did anybody see that? I don't have anything in my purse to pick it up with. Is some little child gonna think it's a milk dud? Just keep on moving, everybody. Just keep on moving. Oh, me. All right. Now they are grown. And I cannot believe it. It just flew by. My boy is 24 years old, and he is married. He got out of college. He met his college sweetheart his freshman year. He, never, he said he would never marry young, but he did. And he brought her home. And I, all right, who in here has had boys and girls? Can you clap? <laughs> who do you think, okay, who do you think's easier to raise? I mean, just yell it out, boys or girls. 
boys. 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 Every once in a while, a little frail woman will yell, girl. And she's probably being threatened. But anyway, <laughs> no. We love our girls. I love my girls. I truly do. And I know that when I'm in the nursing home, they'll be the ones to come and pluck my chin hairs. Because my boy will be off with his wife and her people. Because he said to me, uh, well, he brought her home and he said, you got a terrible look on your forehead. And I said, oh, it's nothing against her. It's just I'm jealous because I thought you would only love me. I know that's twisted. I know it is. But he was the best thing that ever happened to me. All right, my kids all yell at me and my husband, everybody's in a bad mood all the time. And he's the only one that's never fussed at me. And he was just the sweetest child growing up. And so when he said he was going to marry somebody and move off, I, it was awful. But let me say that I love her. And they live near us. And she's like another child to me. And it has been a blessing. She is very sweet and has forgiven me for my forehead looks. But anyway, <laughs> but he said to me right before they got married, he goes, Mom, she's going to be my immediate family. You're now my extended family. He said, Mom, that's biblical. I thought, why did I show him the Bible? <laughs> Let me tell you all about him. He's an old soul. Have you ever met anybody that was an old soul? He was born an 80-year-old man. He has had a garden since he was in sixth grade. He plays the mountain dulcimer and the banjo. He woodworks. He makes spoons. <laughs> he makes spoons. I mean, he is so yummy. All right, his favorite music is gospel bluegrass. His favorite, <laughs> oh, well, no. Okay. Ding a ding a ding. All right. <laughs> His favorite artist was Dr. Ralph Stanley. Dr. Ralph, ah, look at you. Look at you. Knowing who Dr. Ralph Stanley is. Okay, for those of you who don't, he was on the Oath Brother Where Art Thou. That is probably the most famous thing he did. But he was the godfather of Mountain Soul. He ended up dying at like 92. He had a little cowboy hat propped on his head. Yummy. Okay, he would come through Knoxville and I would take my son to see Dr. Ralph when my son couldn't drive. They propped little Dr. Ralph up on stage because he was so old. I almost threw my panties at him because <laughs> that's what you do to Tom Jones. And I love him. But anyway, I'm standing there listening to Dr. Ralph Stanley singing gospel bluegrass, and I think to myself, how many teenage boys are listening to this? What are teenage boys listening to? Rihanna. Walk a flock of flame. Some of that nasty goings on. I thought, wouldn't it be funny if I had to yell at my boy, turn that gospel bluegrass down. You're out of control. If I hear I saw the light one more time. All right, here's another example of meanness. Um, my middle one uh, is in a sorority at the University of Tennessee, and a lot of those little girls will come home that can't go home on the weekends. They'll come to our house, and I can cook for them. I enjoy it. I really do. And they can wash their clothes. Well, one little girl came, and I washed that little thing's clothes because she stayed two days. And all I said, all I said to her was, Katie, you're so tiny. Your little underwear looks like a slingshot. <laughs> that little girl thought it was funny, and my baby looked at me and went... <laughs> so I got out of there. And then when that little girl left, I came back in, I said, what's wrong? with me saying that her little panties look like a slingshot. I wish somebody would say my panties look like a slingshot. You boys in the front row, 
Y'all want to know what my panties look like? <laughs> Did y'all ever watch Braveheart and Mel Gibson? <laughs> you remember that big old catapult when they'd pull that big thing back, put a ball in it, fling it, and kill a bunch of women and children with it? That's what my panties look like. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Thank you for clapping for my panties. Um, I used to wear Victoria's Secret when I was their age. Because I still had hope. And, but y'all know what? I quit wearing them. You know why? Because y'all know who owns Victoria's Secret? Satan. <laughs> and I don't wear my panties for evil. <laughs> so, that, and that was cutting me in two. They just got to be too little. So, I bought Somas. Anybody here giving up like I have? Anybody here wearing Somas? No? Let me tell you about Somas. They're the best thing that's ever happened. Okay, because they've got a whole line of, of nightgowns and underwear and all this stuff that's called Cool Nights. Because it pulls moisture away from you in the night, yay. To keep you from having a stroke. <laughs> because you're going through the change and you're sweating. Dr. Oz, are y'all with me? So, it has a dry fit technology in it. So you boys could play golf in them. I'm not kidding. They're not pretty, but anyway, that's what I wear. Um, let me tell y'all a little bit about my husband. Um, my husband is very smart and very quiet and an introvert and does very well in, um, uh, and then married me, and, and we've been exactly the opposite, but it has worked. Um, he's a big man. He's 6'4". He can kick a door in, and I like that. Um, he works like a dog, and he loves a baby. Let me tell y'all that he is a baby cuddler at East Tennessee Children's Hospital. He cuddles the drug-dependent babies every week of the world as a volunteer. I oh, know, sweet. He didn't help me with mine. <laughs> but... Cause he was out making a living and paying for all this. We've got two still in college, and, and I wanted a fourth baby so bad when my baby child went to kindergarten. I nearly grieved myself to death. I thought, Lord, what am I gonna do with all this time on my hands? I hope I don't get hooked on whiskey and start honky-tonking. <laughs> and about three weeks into her going to kindergarten, I was like, woohoo, woohoo, now I can go get a pap smear without somebody sitting on my head. <laughs> But my husband, when I dropped her off, we, he said, meet me at the IHOP. Because he knows that pancakes get me through a hard time. <laughs> and I was crying, and, and I said, I want another baby. And he said, why don't you get a job? <laughs> yeah, right. So... <laughs> I said, I'm on a fourth baby. And he said, y'all are sucking the financial life out of me. So he bought me a dachshund. I had that dachshund for years. She's gone now. But let me tell you, she and I both got thyroid issues. She had cushions. I was walking her in our neighborhood one day, and a little girl came out in her driveway, and she said, can I pet your groundhog? <laughs> oh, y'all. So about my husband. All right, so my husband is a big man and is 6'4". I'm 5'8". We breed big kids. And, um, and we wanted them to be in sports And when they were growing up. And so we made them do all kinds of mess they didn't want to do. And we put our boy, when he was little bitty, we put him in T-ball. He hated it. 
Um, I don't know if any of y'all have had a baby play t-ball, but for those of you who don't know, t-ball season, it's about 110 degrees outside. <laughs> it's little children that are four, look like they've got a diaper on under their baseball pants <laughs> or a pull-up. Um, the games last about three hours. <laughs> Nobody ever hits the ball, throws the ball, catches the ball, <laughs> makes contact with the ball. <laughs> My baby laid in a fetal position in the outfield the entire season. He never touched a ball. Every once in a while, he'd pop his little head up and say, water. <laughs> one game, it was so hot, and I, t I told the middle one to go out and take her brother a water bottle. She was about two and a half, and she went walking out there with a tutu and a crown and a wand and her pink prostitute shoes from Walmart. <laughs> She walked about halfway, stopped, got a glazed look over her eyes, pulled her little panties to the side, and pooped in the t-ball thing. <laughs> she really did. So I had to run out there and get a stick and flick it into the woods, because I didn't want another child to step in it or think it was a milk dud. <laughs> he would not play sports for several years because of that trauma. <laughs> and then ended up playing football and, and cross country and a bunch of stuff and still very, he likes to mountain bike and hike and do scary things. But he likes to come, you know, out west to do it. He likes, and he's a fly fisherman. Can y'all tell I'm in love with him? Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, about the sports. I played sports. I wanted them to play sports, too. I know y'all are thinking, you sissy thing, you did not. But I played basketball. Thank you. I need that. Um, it was the early 80s when I played, and uh, I had really big hair. I used to hot roll my hair to play ball. We all did. Okay, so, and I am from such a little bitty farming community, and it's 500 people in Middle Tennessee, and we didn't know what waterproof mascara was. So by the end of my games, I looked like, say if Tammy Wynette and Alice Cooper had a child together. <laughs> I was a forward. Sometimes I had to be the center if Mary Dallin had to take her baby to the health department. <laughs> My husband is very smart, does very well. Um, we are sucking the life out of him. Um, he is a nice looking man, but he has a receding hairline and he hates it. I think it's handsome, but he hates it. So I said, why don't I take you to my hairdresser and we'll get her to buzz you one of those haircuts real close to your head, like Justin Timberlake. You know what I mean? Like real close to the head. Well, we did it, and we didn't know his head was pointed. <laughs> and he said, I look like somebody, and I can't quite think of who it is. And I said, is it bull on night court? <laughs> He said, no, that's not who I was thinking about. I was, and about three days later, he said, I know who it is. It's that lazy starfish Patrick on SpongeBob for first time. <laughs> I gotta get a thing of water, honey. I'm about to, I'm spitting cotton. <laughs> oh, y'all, I'm so, so, much more, than, way more than I have. And since I had a baby in the hospital, I probably weigh about the same that I had a baby in the hospital.
And back then, I remember thinking, oh my gosh, what in the world's happened to me? And I had my class reunion right after I had my first baby, and I wore a big jumper, and I was nursing. And I remember, um, like, drinking a Diet Coke, and my breast milk shot out the front of my dress. <laughs> and then one of my friends from high school said, when are you gonna have your baby? And I was like, I've had my baby. <laughs> But anyway, I feel fat, and um, and I am, and it's my hormones. I have no testosterone. I went to the doctor. I had no testosterone, no progesterone. I have way too much estrogen, which evidently makes you bitter and angry, and hateful. That's what my family says. I think they're bitter and hateful and angry. But it has messed up my weight and all that. Well, that, and I've been eating white flour. But let me, I have been on every diet in the world. I've done everything. I've done Whole30. I've done I've, South Beach. I can't even, I have done Weight Watchers. All right, I praise God that Weight Watchers doesn't have a limit on how many times you can join. Because I have joined Weight Watchers nine times and lost seven pounds in all. <laughs> Come to find out, you have to follow a program. <laughs> I know that, but I go because the meetings are funny, and it's like, it's like going to a comedy club. It really is. It's like AA, but it's for people who eat their emotions. And, I, and that's who I am. I eat my emotions. Like my husband would come home and the kids would be fighting and he'd say something like, what have you done all day? And I'd eat a hot dog and I don't even know where it came from. <laughs> well, I had to, to keep from drinking whiskey. I didn't want to get hooked on whiskey with little children. So, um, so I joined Weight Watchers so many times, and this last time, I, Oprah bought it. And they had Oprah on TV, and she is twirling pasta on a fork and running through tall grass. And I thought, well, if she can do it, I can do it. No, so, um, no, turns out, no, for the ninth time. But what the deal is, is they give you a point value on food. So, fruits and vegetables are free. You don't, you don't care, really. And like a piece of beef that's the size of a credit card. It's like five points or something like that. You don't want any of that. You're so hungry when you start that you could eat the wallpaper off the walls. You want a Snickers bar, but they're like 12 points. My sister goes on it every time I do, and she'll call me and she'll say, it's noon, and I've eaten all my points. <laughs> um, oh, y'all, I've done every kind of exercise in the world, and when I was y'all age, I was so gung-ho, and I wanted to go and do, and I wanted to be firm and tone, and then one day I just said, I don't care. But, and that's a good feeling too, but when I was y'all's age, I was big into CrossFit. Do y'all have CrossFit here? Ooh. I hope y'all don't end up in a boot. All right. It is bad mamma jamma. And they came to Knoxville, and they, these young boys in their early 20s opened it up, and they were darling. And they both had little fannies that looked like baseballs. And I wanted, I wanted my fanny to look like a baseball. So I got my good friend, Becky, Becky and I joined CrossFit together. For those of you who don't know, it's like military moves, push-ups, pull-ups, that kind of thing. They'd put a big tractor tire in the parking lot and they'd set Becky in it and I'd pull her across the parking lot <laughs> while she held her purse. <laughs> well, these boys came to us one day and they said, hey, we're gonna have a contest and whoever wins it gets three months of free training. And um, it's going to be up for the women and for the men. It's going to last 10 weeks. We're going to take your before and after picture, and then the whole gym's going to vote on whose body has changed the most. We were like, yes. So one day, we show up, didn't know it was picture day. I had on a horrible-looking sports bra that had lost all of its 
support. And I should have, I should have bezed it the night before. It had a gray tint to it, and it really wasn't gray. It was white. And, and if I'd have known it was going to be a picture day, I'd have gotten a spray tan. But anyway, we get, they said, take your top off to me and Becky, and they go, just leave on your sports bra and your spandex, and we're going to take your picture. And I was like, whoa, wait a minute. And I didn't want those little boys to not ever want to marry and have children. So I said, Becky, me and you, we're going in the back. I said, I'm taking Becky's picture and she'll take mine. So we went in the back, in the back room, and Becky went. And I said, what are you doing, Becky? Don't you want to win this thing? I want to win it. So I took my spandex and shoved it under my stomach and went. Thank you. Oh, it was a sight. These kids put it on the internet. Because that's what kids do. So if y'all Google it, and you see this poor woman with her head cut off with these two feed sacks, oh, it was a sight. But what they said, they go, okay, you're, and when I saw that, I thought, oh my gosh, you are what you eat, and I look like a big bun, is what I look like. <laughs> but they said, you're going to eat paleo, and it's what God put upon the earth to sustain us. So if you can run it down and kill it, <laughs> dig it out of the ground, pick it off of a bush, you can eat it. So that's lean meats, fruits, vegetables, nuts, berries, and seeds. That's no grain, no grain, no dairy. When's the last time any of y'all ever got off of white flour? Anybody? Oh, and you still can yell. Okay. Good for you. Oh my gosh, I had the shakes. Becky and I both were shaking. We drank a bunch of coffee. Then we had to have our teeth whitened. Anyway, my husband said, you are so hateful. Will you please eat a piece of white bread? I mean, it was awful. I mean, I never, I, I mean, oh, how horrible if somebody had to get off of heroin. I mean, and I don't know what that's like, but I watched Shaft when I was little, and I, I remember it being a booger when somebody had to get off of heroin. This felt similar. It may not have been. Anyway, they took the after picture, and I made sure I had a spray tan. Let me tell you that, honey, because a spray tan takes 12 pounds off of you. Anyway, I had a spray tan. I had on a really cute sports bra and spandex. And uh, I took mine, and I'm ashamed to tell y'all, but I won that thing. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm so ashamed that y'all are giving me that love. I know y'all are thinking, what happened, Leanne? i tell you what happened. I spotted a tortilla. That's what happened. Oh, y'all, it is summer, finally. I know, I'm so tickled that we're, we've got, now got spring and we're about to get into summer. Okay, it's bathing suit time. I know y'all are tickled. I know y'all are tickled. Um, to go and try on bathing suits, yay. Um, I'd rather take a bullet, but it's that thing everybody has to do. I did a big show for a bunch of women one time and a woman came up to me and said, have you, have you ever seen the swim dress at Land's Inn at Sears? And I was like, no, I'm not dead yet, but she goes, no, I'm not, it'll change your life. So I go to the Sears in my hometown. Have y'all been to Sears lately? There's not a soul in Sears. There's nobody shopping, nobody working. The lights are all on. I thought, are they running dope out of Sears? But I got a swim dress and I'm beautiful in it. I am beautiful in it. It covers up all my boogity boo. Okay, so, what I've worn for years, over the years, is a miracle suit. The miracle suit is at department stores. It's got a tag on it that says, lose 10 pounds in, in 10 minutes. And you do, because you sweat yourself to death <laughs> trying to get it on. Because it's a one piece, and there's a girdle in it. 
I know, gross. Okay, have you eaten? All right, there's a, there's a girdle in it, so it smooths you out real cute through here. You look real nice through here because it squeezes your fat out in every other hole. And don't get it wet. Somebody will have to cut it off of you. So I buy it, I bought it for years, I bought it and I looked terrible in it. And I knew it, so I'd buy a big sarong and like wrap it around my body and then act like I'm reading a book. Okay, so my good friend knew that I was buying Miracle Suit. She goes, I want one. So she took her 14-year-old girl and they went to the department store and they got in the dressing room and the 14-year-old was sacking her mama up in this bathing suit. They both broke out in a sweat over their lip. And the 14-year-old said, ooh, gross. Mom, put it back, let's get out of here. She said, I can't, I gotta buy it. I just peed in it. Thank y'all so much.